All right, hi. Um, Lava Pa. Uh, as you all know, you all are going to be tellers in the upcoming national convention, and that's a really uh, important responsibility. The basic idea is, as you probably know, during the convention, there's two primary purposes for the convention. The first is to provide an opportunity for the delegates to talk to the current and coming National Spiritual Assembly and express its concerns and uh, any questions or issues that they have and things that they might want the National Spiritual Assembly to consider in the upcoming year. But beyond that, of course, the most important thing is that the National Spiritual Assembly is elected. And to get that done, um, of course, the most important thing is trust in God. So throughout this whole process, as a teller, it's very important for two things. is one, to keep prayer as a central part of what you're doing. So multiple times during the day, especially before doing the tallies, it's good to say a prayer or two to make sure that connection is established. After that, the other thing is to just make sure that you follow your feelings and you feel like, you know, that things are going well. If at any point of the process you feel that something's a little off, it's better to talk about it, consider it, work it out then, and make sure things are done right versus waiting later on and then finding out that maybe something didn't go the way you wanted. All right. So for this training video, the idea is to just go over some documentation that's been created. It has a lot of information about how um, the elections have been done in the past. And of course, there's always room for improvement, but some of the lessons learned in the past are, are probably going to be useful for the future as well. Beyond that, it's just pure experience. When you've got some experience, this will, as we go through the documentation, it'll give you an idea of what being a teller will be like during the convention and increase the likelihood that things will go well. So what we're going to do is just kind of go through that documentation, look at a couple of other documents as well, and hopefully that'll help prepare everybody for what's coming. Okay, the thing is here you see the annual convention teller documentation, and it's split out into several different areas. It talks about the materials needed for the convention, it talks about when the tellers are likely to be needed to be available to do um, the telling and counting the ballots. So it goes through what the officer elections are like, the NSA election is like, and then it goes through the process of counting the ballots, in particular when doing the NSA election. And beyond that, there's an appendix at the end that has some additional information as well. So we'll go through all of this, um, and hopefully it'll be helpful. The first thing, as in with most things of life, is you want to do things right, you got to be prepared. And in this particular case, beyond the training, the other thing that needs to be prepared is to make sure you have the right materials in place before the convention so that you're not running around last minute trying to take care of that. And in terms of those type things, one of the things you want to make sure is that all the tellers have pens. There's going to be a lot of writing done during this whole process, and it's nice to have the tellers have those pens when you need them. Beyond that, the delegates may need pens as well, and sometimes you know, they're already given pens and everything else like that. And it's likely that most of them will already have something to write with. But there could be times when someone needs a pen and you don't want to have to run around at that point trying to find one. So it's good to bring extra pens just in case for the delegates. Beyond that, it's good to have blank paper. Um, you never know what's going to happen, especially with the number of votes that could occur from ties and other things like that. It's, extra to have, it's nice to have a couple of extra sheets of paper around so that if you need them, you don't have to go searching for them. Beyond that, it's good to have Ziploc bags for storage. About four or five small ones and, and one big one. The primary purpose for this is to provide a place to store the ballots. It's oftentimes good to store the ballots for future reference, just in case, and it, it's good to have an easy place to put them, and a place where you can separate the ballots that were used for each of the different votes. So in this particular case, having the um, Ballots, or having the Ziploc bags to put the ballots in really makes that easy. Beyond that, at the end, there's, uh, you know, you want to hand all this information off to the new National Spiritual Assembly. And the best way to do that, that we have found, is just to have a large envelope. So at the, you have a large envelope, and at the end, you can put all the material related to the elections in there, hand it off to the new National Spiritual Assembly, and your job is done. Besides that, there's a voting spreadsheet that we've been using over the last several years. Um, and we'll go through... Uh, that um, and there of course you need, to have a spreadsheet you need a computer to use it as well so we'll look at a little bit of what that's like but it's good to have those ready to go and someone trained to use the voting spreadsheet if that's something you decide to do beyond that it's good to have a bowl or a box 
used to hold the votes. So there's going to be multiple votes, at least three during the day. You want to have a place to put those ballots. Um, so it's good to have that ready from the very beginning. Throughout the rest of this thing, I'll just be calling it the voting box, regardless of whether it's a bowl or otherwise. But basically, you want to have a voting container where the ballots can be held, and everybody knows that's where they're supposed to put them. Besides that, you want to have a list, a printed list of the viable believers, uh, believers that can be voted for. In other words, 21, good standing, 21 or older, good standing um, Baha'is who live in Belize. Um, you want to have that list ready so if someone has any questions about whether they can vote for someone or how to spell their name or anything else like that, you can easily have a list to refer to. And the last thing is you want to have a tally sheet. You want to have a sheet of paper um, that you can keep the votes on and we'll go through and look at what that might look like as well. So those are the things that usually the um, tellers need to make sure that are available during the convention. Beyond that, um, there's some materials that you usually get from the National Spiritual Assembly. So some of those materials are the ballots that are needed for the initial vote of the National Spiritual Assembly. So we'll see what that looks like um, uh, in a little while. Also, it's good to have a list of the delegates. And this list of delegates doesn't necessarily have to be one that you hand out to each of the delegates. It may be just a list of delegates that's on the front table hanging up on an easel somewhere or even on the wall so that if people need to refer to it for any reason, they know exactly where to go. But that's usually taken care of by the National Spiritual Assembly, but it's, used a good, it's a good idea to talk to members of the National Spiritual Assembly, probably the secretary, before the event so you make sure that those materials are available. Okay, if, once you have these materials, you're probably in pretty good shape in terms of going to the convention. Uh, you probably have most of what you need from a material perspective, but now we need to get into some of the aspects of being a teller as well. So of course, it's important as a teller, if you're gonna be a teller, you gotta be there when the vote's occurring. So it's important to know when you need to be available to make sure as a teller, and especially as the head teller, you're there. And you don't wanna be showing up right, you know, if it's gonna be at nine, you don't wanna show up at nine. You wanna make sure you're there probably at least a half an hour early. Things change during the convention. You never know what's going to happen, and you want to be ready to go um, whenever they call you to do the job. So the first thing is, during the convention, there is the election of the convention officers. The convention starts with temporary officers, but those officers, the chairperson and the secretary, have to be replaced with permanent officers. Um, and that usually happens first thing Saturday morning. So... Saturday morning, the convention starts in earnest. Um, you usually have a few prayers, maybe a couple of announcements or something like that. And then right after that, it's the election of the officers. So the tellers really need, their, need to be there almost from the very beginning, just to make sure you're ready. Um, and that process usually goes pretty quickly because both the chairperson and the secretary is only one person. So the vote occurs once, maybe twice, and usually after that it's done and counting 19 votes for one person isn't really usually that difficult. So that process usually goes pretty quickly. And so after that, you're pretty much done until the afternoon. And Saturday afternoon is when the a vote for the National Spiritual Assembly happens. And based on recent experience, being that some delegates leave Saturday afternoon, late Saturday afternoon, it's usually a good idea to have that vote early Saturday um, afternoon, and that means that it could be anywhere from one or two in the afternoon after lunch. The best thing to do is to look at the agenda and to confer with the chairperson and secretary of the convention to make sure you understand when the intended time is for the vote. And again, it's always good to show up early. So if it's going to happen at two, it's probably good to be there at 1.30. So you're there, you're ready to go, you have all the materials and everything else like that. So those are the times that the tellers have to be available. Usually Saturday morning, early, and again, usually early Saturday afternoon. If you're available those two times, that should pretty much be it. But as mentioned, it's good to show up early. Okay, so how does the election for the um, officers of the convention go? Well, the first thing to understand is that there are two elections, the chairperson and the secretary. And it's good to let the people, the delegates, because only the delegates are voting during this whole process. It's good to let the delegates know that right up front. 
So whether it's the head teller or it's someone that the head teller appoints, when the tellers are called to um, run the vote for the uh, convention officers, it's good to mention several things. One of them is that there's going to be two elections, each for one person. Um, okay, that you're going to have um, ballots that only allow for one vote to be done for the chairperson. Um, you're going to have um, the bowl up front and um, you're going to have some extra pens in terms of materials. I forgot I was going through. Anyway, so yes, in terms of materials to get this thing done, you want to have 19 ballots. And the ballots could look something like this. Just um, This will be provided in the link that will be uh, accompanying this particular video. And you can see that it says chair at the top and it provides enough room for one person and it provides lots of ballots. So if there's, you can probably print two pages of this out. Um, if there is a tie or something like that, then you can just tear off a few more ballots, hand those out, and it's clear who people are voting for in this particular case. So you need that, you need the bowl, and you need a few extra pens. Now in terms of what to say, um, when the office, the election starts, it's good to emphasize to the delegates that there's going to be two elections done, one for chair, one for secretary. You usually start with the chair first. It's good, to probably, unless the temporary officers already mentioned this, it's good to mention that the chair facilitates the consultation of the convention, that each ballot should only have one name, the only people eligible to be voted for are the delegates that are present at the convention because obviously you can't vote for a delegate that's not there. They won't be able to do the job. You want to tell them that um, where the list of delegates is so that if someone needs to run up there and write, you know, get the name of someone, they know where to go to look for it. Um, and then the idea is to let the delegates know that you're going to hand the ballots out. Um, and once they get the ballot and they write the vote down, they should just stay in their seat and wait until everybody is done with the voting process. And if there are any questions during this whole thing, to go ask one of the tellers um, for clarification. And the tellers, of course, can help out. So while the head teller is communicating this information to the delegates, then the idea is the delegates, when the, uh, the, the head teller or whoever else is doing this is done, the delegates can do their vote. Um, then the voting box is put up in the front, usually on the table behind which the, um, the convention officers are, the chairperson and the secretary. Once all the delegates are done voting, the idea usually at this point is to call each of the delegates present name and have the person come up one at a time, put their vote into the voting box, and then once all the votes are submitted, you take the box and you usually go downstairs and um, start the voting. The thing to remember during this whole process, throughout the whole thing, regardless of what election it is, there should always be at least two people with the ballots. There should never be a point there's only one person with the ballot ever. This never should happen because we want to make sure that this, is a tra this, this vote is transparent, that it has uh, integrity, and that there's never a question as to what happened with the ballots, what's going on, did someone do something, whatever. Those questions should be off the table. And one of the easiest ways to ensure that happens is by having um, two people with the ballots at all times. In any case, once you get downstairs, it's usually pretty simple. You only have... 19 ballots with one person on it. It's usually just a matter of having four people, you read the ballots, you put them into different um, groups based on whoever, you know, person A, person B, person C, person D. When you have the 19 ballots in their different groups based on the name, you sit there and just count them. And it's usually pretty straightforward. There's usually one or two people that have the most votes. And of those, it's usually one person that wins, but every now and then there's going to be a tie. So if there isn't a tie, then what happens is the tellers go back upstairs. It's usually the head teller that approaches the um, temporary chair and says, we've got um, the results. The temporary chair then opens the floor for the teller to announce the results. And then once that's done, then that person is, becomes the official chair of the convention. And then they kind of run the show from there. They will then 
asked the tellers to go and start the election for the next uh, convention officer. Or if it's a tie, then what you have to do is to go through the process of handing out ballots again, having people vote, but you only allow them to vote for the two people or three people or whatever that are tied. You don't vote for everybody, you're just voting for the people who are tied. So if there's person A, B, and C, then you just say, okay, we're gonna have a re-vote. You only can vote for A, B, or C, and that's it. And then people vote again. Same process we talked about before. You go back downstairs and you do the count. And usually it's done the first time, but second time usually seals the deal. Of course, once that's done, now we gotta go through the same process to vote for the secretary. And it works exactly the same way as it worked for the chairperson. Instead, this time, it's the secretary, and everybody pretty knows what is pretty much knows what a secretary does. The secretary kind of looks over the agenda, takes minutes of the meeting, all of those other type of things, and you mention all the other things that were mentioned for the chairperson, the same process in terms of the voting. Once that's done, then um, you go back and announce the results to the delegates. Now you have an official chair and secretary for the convention, and in terms of the teller's work, that means at that point the teller works, teller's work is done and you can um, take a break for a while. Okay, but now we move on to the more interesting stuff, and that is the National Spiritual Assembly vote. The National Spiritual Assembly vote, as we talked about before, occurs uh, usually early Saturday afternoon. But the thing to realize with the vote is it's important to be ready, not only in terms of having the materials ready, but because this vote is more involved and it's going to be, need more space to kind of make sure you can do the vote, um, counting correctly. It means that some place, whether it's in the Baha'i Center, usually downstairs in the living room, or at someone's home, or at some other location, that place has to be set up beforehand to um, make sure everything is good and ready to go. So what that usually involves is to, if you're going to use like the room downstairs in the center, what that usually involves is going into the living room or the bedroom right next to it or whatever and kind of clearing it out. Um, and that means that you go in there, you talk to anybody who's currently using the room and let them know, you know what's going on. We're going to have a vote. The vote's going to occur at such and such a time. Around that time, we're going to need everybody to exit this room. You work out all of those things beforehand. You don't wait till the vote has occurred. After people have kind of giving you room, then what you need to do is to set things up. And that usually means having a table and having at least four, three to four chairs, enough chairs for all the tellers. And um, just making sure that everything is set up in a way that everybody feels comfortable and that the table is clean, it's, it's clear that you have the space you need to do your work. So that's got to be set up beforehand. And one of the reasons why that's important is because over the last several years, what we have found is, again, there's some delegates that leave Saturday afternoon. And there are times when by the time you get done with lunch and people talking a little bit and an election occurs, and especially if there's a tie and more elections have to occur, there's some delegates that really want to know the results before they leave. And one of the best ways of doing that is making sure that, that, that the vote of... Um, the ballots is done accurately and in a timely manner. And one of the best ways to do that is make sure the room is set up beforehand so everything's taken care of. Okay, so now we've got it. So it's, um, we look at the agenda, we talk to the chairperson, they say it's, let's say it's gonna be at 2 p.m. We go down at like 1.30, we tell people, hey, we really need this room down here in the living room. We clear out the living room, we put in the table, we put in the chairs, we wipe off the table, everything's ready to go. Um, so we clear out that space. We have all the materials we need. We've got that all set up as well. So now it's time, it's two o'clock or whatever comes along and the chairperson says, okay, now we're gonna move to the vote for the National Spiritual Assembly. So in that particular case, um, a little bit more needs to be done to prepare the delegates and to, um, make sure that they know exactly what it is they're responsible to do. So in this particular case, the, again, the head teller or whoever is appointed to be the teller who um, is going to talk to the delegates needs to tell them certain things to make sure they clearly understand it because there's some delegates that this may be their first convention. 
Some have had years of experience and they know what to do. Other ones might not. So we want to make sure that we give everybody all the information they need so there's no confusion as to what's going on. So the first thing we need to do when we get up there is to let people know this is the vote for the National Spiritual Assembly. We're going to be voting for nine people and nine people only. It has to be nine people. All the people on the ballot, oh, and you can see right here with the delegate instructions, all the people on the ballot must be unique. There can be no duplicates. So you need to make sure that every single person you're voting for is only listed on that ballot once. It must be a declared Baha'i in good standing, 21 years or older. They can live anywhere in the country of Belize. They can be at the convention or not at the convention. You, of course, can vote for yourself as a delegate. If you think, is it, if a delegate feels that they're one of the best, one of the top nine people in the country to be on the National Spiritual Assembly, they can feel free to vote for themselves. And delegates can vote for pioneers as well, as long as that pioneer has made a commitment to be in Belize for at least one year. If the pioneer has not made a commitment to be in Belize for at least one year, then they should not be voted for on the National Spiritual Assembly. So that at least tells people who they should vote for. And as long as people follow these rules, then everything should be fine. But it's also probably a good idea to let people know what an invalid ballot is. So they're clear, just, you know, just in case, because it might come up later and you don't want people, well, I didn't know that would be an invalid ballot. So we let people know that ballots will be considered invalid if there are more than nine names on the ballot, less than nine names on the ballot, or any duplicate names on the nine ballot. So on, on duplicate names on the ballot. So that that needs to be communicated as well. Beyond that, there are times when an individual vote on a ballot will be considered invalid, but the rest of the ballot would be okay. And in that particular case is when someone writes a name there, but it's just hard to read. You can't tell what it is then that's considered to be an invalid vote, but not. But the rest of the ballot, ballot can be still considered. Also, there are times when someone might vote for someone that's ineligible, but that then that will mean that that vote is, is not considered, but again, the rest of the ballot is okay. So, for example, if someone votes for a youth, um, or maybe votes for someone who has lost their rights or something like that, um, that particular vote for that person will not be counted, but the rest of the ballot will be considered. Beyond that, it's good to remind delegates. And we've been reminding people, the delegates, the last couple of years, and it's actually worked out pretty well. So it, this is something that's good to continue, to make sure to tell them they should check their entire ballot before they turn it in. So when they're done, they should check it once, probably twice, to make sure it's, it's okay and follows all the rules that we talked about above. They should write very clearly so that anybody who understands English can read the name that they're talking about. So that hasn't always been true in the past. We want to make sure that we encourage people to write clearly. Um, beyond that, there's room on the ballot for nicknames and helpful descriptions. And we want to make sure that people are using those. And then lastly, um, if you don't know the name of a person, please feel free to ask the tellers. Um, so they can you know, give information as well. So we want to communicate all of those different things to people. And generally speaking, um, we have found in the past that if you do all of this, things usually work out pretty well. So for example, just real quickly, this is what a ballot looks like. And so you have the first name there, the last name or title, the nickname or helpful description. So the idea is, for example, Right now, if someone were to write on the ballot, they wanted to, you know, I'm just, just using um, Richie, my son, as an example. First name Richard, last name Bean, but he and I, do, do, do they mean me? Do they mean him? Who knows? Well, if you put in a nickname, say Richie, that would tend to indicate that's maybe my son because not many people call me Richie. And then if you put in a helpful description, son of Hey the, then, okay, now we know. If you say Richard Bean, there's several Richard Beans in the country, but there's only one that's called Richie, and there's only one that's the son of Hayda. So that's what we want to encourage people to do in the ballot, is put their first name, last name, nickname, and helpful description. The more of that information there is there, the more likely that everything is going to go well. 
Oh, and the other thing to point out with the ballot is it has much of the information that we have already discussed as well. It talks about most of the rules, you know, voting for only nine people. Um, the votes, you know, must be a declared Baha'i in good standing, live anywhere in the country, attending or it can be attending convention or not attending convention. Vote, you can vote for yourself and you must vote for nine different people. So the idea is the ballot's already been set up. The ballot's been working pretty well. There's always room for looking at improvements, and if you have some, it might be good to make a suggestion to the National Spiritual Assembly. But as of right now, things look pretty good in that regard. Okay, now the thing that we want to do is look at the process of counting the votes. And again, in terms of, so let's just kind of review. So we've, we've, we've told people what to do as, in terms of delegates. The delegates then usually say a prayer or two. They take time can take 15, 20 plus minutes. Eventually, they all decide that they're ready to go. At that point, we follow the same process that we did earlier, which is you put the box up front, probably on the table with the officers. You call out each of the different um, delegates. Their ballot is put in one at a time. And in this particular case, there may be some absentee ballots. And usually at that point, one of the delegates has those. You call out that delegate's name. The absentee ballot is brought up and put into the, ba um, the ballot box as well. Once that's all done, thank the delegates for their votes. And again, you go downstairs and start the process of counting the votes. In terms of that process, the thing to always remember again, at least two people with the ballots at all times. Never have a case where only one person with the ballot. At least two people all the time. And one thing that um, I should at least mention is that in past conventions, it was talked about, well, should we mention the people who have lost their rights? And it came, we came to the, the um, conclusion, in the, and it was decided that in the past, that wouldn't be a good idea. That we should just emphasize that you should vote for people in good standing, and that most of the delegates would know who those people are in good standing. And if there are people who have lost their rights, they would probably know that as well. So there's, there's no need to go through that. Just emphasize voting for people in good standing. All right. So all the votes have been collected. Um, then um, you go downstairs. And then the idea is to review the votes, votes that are in the ballot box. So you, you look at the, the delegate list that you have. And you can just go through and say, OK, how many votes were made here at the convention? And you go through and maybe 15 of the uh, 19 delegates are there and they voted. So you look at how many ballots do you have? 15. Okay, how many people are here in attendance? 15. Okay, that's good. Then you look at, well, how many people aren't here? Well, there's 19 delegates, so there's four people aren't here. How many absentee ballots do we have? Okay, we have an absentee ballot from so-and-so. You know, you go check those out. Once you make sure all that process is done, and that things look good, then at that point, what you can do is to, um, yeah, you can see, uh, okay, good enough. Um, then what you can do is to take the ballots out of the absentee, because the absentee ballot should be in an envelope. Once you've confirmed that the number of ballots is right, the number of ballots for people in the convention is right, the number of absentee ballots is correct, you can then take those ballots out of the envelopes for absentee ballots, combine them with all the other ballots, and keep them together in the voting box. And then we start the process of going through and preparing for the actual count. The first thing to do is to make sure that each of the ballots has a unique number on it. So for example, when you look at a ballot, you might put the number right at the top here. So put one, two, three, four, that type of thing. And that way we'll know each of the ballots has a separate number that we can always identify. If we ever have any questions, we say, oh, ballot 13 had an issue. We can always go back and we know exactly which ballot was ballot 13. Once that is all done, you review all the ballots to make sure that they're valid. There's no need to start counting a ballot and then figure out halfway through that it's invalid because it has duplicate names. So you go through and make sure that every ballot is following all the rules, both in terms of each individual vote but also in terms of the overall ballot itself. So are there any duplicate names? You know, 21 years and older. You know, all of those things that you're checking to make sure that if there are any issues, you know about those issues right now instead of having to figure it out later on down the thing. Then you use the tally sheets 
to start counting the ballots. So for example, let me see, there we go. Okay, oh, I don't have it up here. That's interesting. Oh, okay, let's go see. So the basic idea is that it's good to have, oh no, oh, okay. Well, I have to figure that out. Um, in any case, the basic idea is you use a sheet of paper to um, count the ballots. And I'll, I'll, I'll look to see if I can find it later. But the basic idea is it's just a sheet of paper that has some room for the names of each of the different uh, people voted for and then has a column for each of the different ballots. And you just mark down who gets votes. And it looks very similar to a spreadsheet that we're going to be talking about. So the, the piece of paper there, there'll be room for names along the um, left-hand side, and then there'll be columns for each of the different votes, and you'll just mark down uh, an, an X or whatever every single time someone gets a vote. And at the end, we'll end up just tallying the votes over on the other side. And now we're talking about the computer aspect of it. While that's going on in terms of writing, there'll be someone else using a computer doing the same thing. So this is the uh, spreadsheet. You put the names down the side. You put the number of votes each particular person gets. And then you tally them up at the end. The basic idea is this process should go slowly so that as the people are reading the va ballots, there's enough time for people to actually tally things, both in terms of paper and in terms of the computer as well. So if there's ever a time where things are going too fast, the people who are kind of keeping track of things should let the right reader know, hey, it's going too fast, slow down a little bit, let me catch up. You don't want to go too fast, you want to make sure it's accurate. Accuracy is much more important than quickness. Um, so while this is going on, usually things are set up so that there's one or two readers, there's one person doing the paper tally, there's one person doing the computer tally. If there's no computer, then there's probably two people doing the tallying separately so that you have two different things going on at the same time you can compare the results at the end to make sure they're okay. If you're using the tally piece of paper in the computer, you do the same thing. You go through the process of counting on the ballots and you compare everything at the end to make sure that everything is as it should be. Based on the fact that there have been issues in the past with the vote, the tally should always be done twice, at least. And then make sure everything goes well. If everything goes well and everything looks good, you get the same results both times, you're good to go, everything's probably okay. If there's any discrepancy, any challenge, whoa, wow, that really turned out differently, it's probably better to do it a third time to make sure that everything is right. The main thing is to get it right, not to get it done quickly. Once this is done, at least in the past what's happened is that the previous, the, the old National Spiritual Assembly has been invited down to kind of review the results, make sure they feel comfortable with it, to make sure everything's okay. That process may change. I'm not sure that's going to be done in the future. But the basic idea is once the tally is done, once the tellers have countered everything, once you all are confident in what's going on, the head teller goes to the chairperson, lets them know that things are complete. The national spiritual, previous National Spiritual Assembly can come down if they'd like or if, they, if the convention decides that's the way they'd like to do it. If that's not the way it's done, then at that point the head teller or the other, another designated teller would then let the delegates know what happened and what the results were. When this happens, what you want to do is let the delegates know who was elected, the number of votes each of those people received, the total number of ballots that were received, the total number of invalid ballots and votes that were received, and the number of absentee ballots. And once that's done, you let them know the convention votes to accept those results. Once those results are accepted, it's pretty much a done deal. Um, the teller's work is almost done, about 95% no, done. At that point, though, there's one thing that needs to be done, and that is to fill out a, a form for, that's sent to the World Center. And that form, it just outlines what the results were and pretty much outlines the information that was given to the delegates. Who was voted for, how many votes they received, number of invalid ballots, number of invalid you know, votes, the number of absentee ballots and, and, and ballots um, delivered by delegates at the convention. And you take all that information and put that in a large envelope that we talked about before. The other thing is, I didn't mention as clearly as I should have, 
is the fact that as all these votes are taking place, anytime there's a next vote, that goes into one of those Ziploc bags. So we have a vote, we put all the ballots and everything in the Ziploc bag. We have another vote, put all the ballots in the Ziploc bag. That's way, if there is any question or any doubts or whatever, you can always go back to one of those Ziploc bags and just pull it out and say, okay, let's, let's look at things again. So I think that's about it. Uh, let's see. Oh, one more thing. Just to go through some sample ballots to see how things can work out. Here's one sample ballot you could look at and try to determine what's wrong. So you can pause the video for just a second and see if you can see if this is a ballot, valid ballot, not, you know, what are the issues. As it turns out, in this particular case, with this particular ballot, the problem is they didn't vote for nine people. So that means that this entire ballot would be invalid and it would be put aside and not counted. What about this one? It turns out in this particular case, the primary issue is the fact that, and this is just a sample, but Richie is not 21 yet. So as a um, um, youth, he wouldn't be eligible to be voted for, and therefore this particular vote would be invalid, but the ba rest of the ballot, ba ballot would still be considered. Here's another one. Um, in this particular case, try to guess. It's not necessarily easy. The, the issue here, again, is that, um, and this has changed a little bit since when we first used this ballot. Uh, Patch is also, at least when this ballot was first created, Patch is also a youth. Um, she was not yet 21. So in that particular case, that would be uh, removed. And the rest of the ballot would still be considered as valid, but that particular issue, um, that particular vote would be taken out. What about this ballot? Okay, and this particular ballot, uh, ballot, ballot does have an issue. And the issue is that vote number two and vote number eight are exactly the same. They're duplicate names. And whenever there's duplicate names, that means the entire ballot is invalid and it is taken aside and not counted for um, the purposes of voting for the National Spiritual Assembly. Okay, what about this one? The primary issue here is the fact that um, vote number seven is kind of hard to read. Like, well, who is that person? What do they want? That means that if any time it's in, in, unintelligible, you can't tell, that particular vote is X'd out, but the rest of the ballot is considered to be valid. And let's see. Um, this is one last ballot. Can you see this? With, with this ballot, is everything okay or any issues? The last thing with this particular ballot is the fact that there are 10 people voted for. And as we've talked about before, you should only vote for nine, no more or no less. So because there's 10 people voted for, that would, could be considered an invalid ballot and the entire ballot would be thrown out and not considered in terms of the National Spiritual Assembly vote. So those are pretty much all the issues that you're likely to run into in terms of ballots. Most times people vote for nine people, they vote for people who are eligible and everything works out pretty well. But every now and then we do run into issues similar to the ones that are mentioned above and those have to be considered. If there are any questions at all about this, discuss it, come up with a consensus, and if there, there is still any question beyond that, then it's probably good to talk to, um, to bring other people involved, the auxiliary board member, the chairperson of the convention, a counselor or counselor representative, if they're there, um, they can work with this as well. So I think that covers most of the issues. Um, remember, you know, trust in God, follow the process. If there's any questions, it's better to work those questions out versus just moving forward. Take your time, be accurate, and I'm sure everything will work out fine. All right, good luck, and um, wish you the best.